the concept or idea of active antenna systems has been around for a while. Um, maybe if you could, each of you could just take a few minutes to talk about some of the latest advance, advancements in the technology and how, you know, what's changed, what makes it more uh, relevant today. Okay, well, let me start with, I think uh, my colleagues have better marketing people. They have cool names like uh, the Cube and Liquid Radio. Uh, Powerway, we have actually a, a super cube that is solid state, and that really works. So, uh, uh, the <laughs> and, and if you're a carrier, you can see it live in motion right now in Orange County. We've deployed it uh, on our building. Um, it's a working 2.6 and 2.1 gigahertz active antenna array that gives you at the minimum 3 to 4 dB better link budget than the most advanced 4G network deployed. And we've deployed uh, with uh, major carriers in, in the United States as well as in, in Asia, and we're pretty excited about getting that extra link budget to the customers. Well, first of all, a, a just so for context, the, the active antenna concept, as Matt pointed out, has been around for a long time. And, and really, it's about not just having the RF uh, capabilities um, sitting behind, uh, you know, a traditional passive antenna, but having them fully integrated. So at Nokia Siemens Networks, uh, we announced, announced liquid radio. But so that you understand the context of liquid radio, it, it actually, for us, is our vision for the evolution of the mobile broadband architecture going forward. So it includes a suite of innovations. Um, and those suite of innovations essentially built is a natural extension of our flexi uh, multi-radio platform, which is, you know, indoor, outdoor, about this big. And so you don't have those, those uh, big boxes that you saw there. Um, and one of those it includes our next generation system on a chip, and that gives us enormous baseband processing capacity. So that that working in conjunction with our active antenna system, which is commercially now launched and available, and, uh, and in trials with carriers will be deployed later this year, actually enables the entire site to come down to that active antenna with fully integrated uh, active R RF processing with the antenna so that you can do beam forming. And so we've ran multiple tests. What we're seeing is 65% improvement over a traditional site. It can run multi-mode, um, eight units, which uh, essentially is the heart of an active antenna, which is one of the, one of the little modules that, that within the site you can use software to control the beam forming so that you can move that coverage where it's needed and around. And as part of this overall concept you probably heard of, which is heterogeneous networks. And that recognizes the enormous demand in data and the challenges carriers have. And the concept that you'll have macro coverage for ubiquitous, and you'll have orders of magnitude of smaller sites that will ideally function together. So if you have the right baseband processing solution, you can centralize that baseband processing so a site is simply an active antenna, or you can distribute it as, as it's done today, but with just a fiber cable from the active antenna to that baseband unit wherever it may be, and all of those other elements that traditionally hung on a cell site go away. And we're really excited about it, and so the concept liquid means that the processing, the active antenna, the innovations we've done with our network management system with fully integrated self-organized network capabilities essentially will allow the coverage of a network to move where people are and where the demand is. And that's our liquid radio concept. Okay, well we've, uh, <clears throat> we've announced a product called Light Radio. Uh, and it, again, it started with uh, Bell Labs looking at what's going on in the industry as far as the data explosion we looked out and saw that we were going to see something like a 30-fold increase in the number of smartphones over the next five years, increasing the data by that much. So you're going to have a network where you're going to have need for more cells. You're going to need uh, to have multiple generations supported simultaneously, 2G, 3G, 4G. Uh, you're also going to be dealing with many frequency bands. So Light Radio took an approach uh, of looking at the system saying, okay, how do I deal with this type of growth? And it has different components. One component is looking at it from a system point of view uh, where you have part of the f processing going on in a cloud 
We also have base the ability to take baseband and remote it or put it where you need to put it. Uh, we also have what's called a system on a chip, which is a, uh, a fully software definable uh, baseband system that allows you to support 2G, 3G, 4G, or combinations thereof. Um, and the main thing that about the light radio system is flexibility, the ability to put baseband where you need it, the ability to put RF where you need it. And the component, I guess, that we everybody's seen is something that we call uh, the cube. This is uh, an actual model of the cube, uh, which is a modular active antenna element, which has electronics, a full, a full transmit and receive in there, uh, transmits several watts, and allows you to build uh, multiple products out of this. So this itself may not be a product, although we do envision you will have small cells built with these, which with one or two of these elements, where you can connect by fiber to a central baseband. So conceive of something in an urban area or in a stadium, as an example. Uh, but you can also array these in a vertical column to build an active antenna array. And you can also put multiple frequencies in a package. So what we envision is, as carriers have to grow uh, to multiple bands and multiple technologies, you can build technology agnostic active antenna arrays. And we'll be trialing these this year with customers and introducing this as a, as a product in 2012. <laughs> Uh, you can take what's on, currently on towers today where you're now building up multiple packages of antennas, multiple packages of RRHs, and combine them into a very small number of ray domes. And you can see that this will help you on tower tops. It will also help you in urban areas where you might have a situation, as was shown there, you've got buildings where you as a carrier have to get into these buildings to do whatever maintenance you want to do. So now what you have is a technology agnostic antenna array, uh, which can perform multiple bands. You can put the equipment you might want to change back at some central location, like uh, an array of basement equipment. And therefore, when you've got to go out and make changes, you're not knocking on all these doors, trying to get to the tops of buildings, trying to get access, trying to get someone in the building to let you, let you up there.